the word why. What a curious word. The kind of word that can make us cringe, feel defensive, or even distant. But you know, sometimes why is the key. The key that can unlock so much to our lives. Join me as we explore the why with fascinating contributors to the world. Those that entertain us, inform us, teach us about life, and if we're lucky, inspire the next in all of us. I'm your host, Dr. Rod Berger, and welcome to Headroom, a production of Rainlight and co-produced by Old Soul. Let's go. I love when we can share stories of international impact that that we also see uh, impact here at home in the United States. Uh, and and being a good neighbor, I think, is also a part of that. And, and integrating in conversations that help to explore what we can do as neighbors to uh, and to support our neighbors in the uh, in the South for those Mexican Americans that are here uh, thriving in the United States. Uh, we are spending time today with Gustavo Gutierrez. He's the president and CEO of Broxel. Uh, Gustavo, it's great to spend some time with you today. Give me the backstory on Broxel and how did it come about? Thank you. Thank you for your time, Rod. It's very important for us. It's very important for me, but it's, I believe it's, it's, it's very, very important for the company as well. So we started Broxel in 2011. Uh, like 10 years or a, li a little bit more of 10 years. Uh, and uh, when the fintech world in Mexico means nothing, you no, know, I believe we fulfill those spaces where the banks are not able to do it. So uh, on those dates, when the fintech world's world means nothing at Mexico, we'll start building some digital platforms and some digital solutions in terms of payments. So uh, we invest a lot of time and a lot of money building uh, regulated entities, but at the same time, all the digital assets, as we call internally, and all together and all combined, allow us to start uh, uh, doing some uh, uh, special services in terms of, the, uh, of payments you know, for the Mexican companies. We start in the B2B side, you know, building a lot of tailor-made solutions for different entities, building uh, different platforms. And now we are moving on the B2C sector, using exactly the same platforms in the B2B, but now moving forward into the B2C. So now as a company, we have two main revenue streams. On the B2B side, we continue obviously with the innovation path, but also now in the B2C. No, an important thing to mention is that Broxel uh, did in the past all the digital assets that we need to be the most important company in terms of payments, not only for Mexico, but also in the, in, in the Latin America region. And now as a starting point in the United States, offering this, this, uh, an amazing, uh, these amazing solutions in terms of B2C solution for this Hispanic or this Hispanic community who are living there and that they are sending a lot of money every day into Mexico. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible amount of money. I mean, it, we're talking about $51 billion just in 2021 alone. So if I'm hearing you correctly, Gustavo, you started out in the B2B and then you started identified gaps and you basically provided solutions to help support where the banks may have been falling short. And then you realize, you know what, there's a B2C opportunity here to provide support, not just within our borders, but beyond to our um to our fellow countrymen that are in different parts of the world in that regard, right? And so you're providing these B2C solutions to help, I guess, counteract sort of the challenges in these remittances. I want to get to that part with the amount of money that is basically taken away when we are sending money from one country to another. Can you speak to that? Yeah, for sure. In 2020, we received from the Hispanics who are living in the United States, 40 US billion into Mexico. 2021, as you mentioned, 51. US billion dollars, but exactly that, that uh, population, exactly that community spends in the United States in 2021 around 400 or 500 US billion dollars. So we want to be part of that community. Now, we are the first financial institution who allows the people to have two accounts using the same application. One account in the United States in US dollars issued in the United States and one account in Mexican pesos issue in Mexico. Just think in this use case. If you are living, for example, in Arizona or in Texas or in California, you can download the application and you can open an account just in two minutes, 
or uh, uh, using your cell phone. And we just ask uh, for an uh, identification, a US ID, or you, if you don't have a US ID because you are an Hispanic and maybe you are, you are just arriving into the United States, we can open an account using a Mexican ID, driver's license, passport, no, or voter's credential, no. And if you have uh, any of those, we can open it using the matricula consular, no, just in two minutes. After that, you can open a Mexican account using your Mexican address. So you can have both in the same application, one in US dollars issued in the United States with the, with the US, uh, USA rules, and one in Mexico, in, in Mexico issued in Mexico, uh, a Mexican card, sorry, issued in Mexico in Mexico with Mexican pesos. And you have the full power and the full ownership of that money. You can move it in between from the United States to uh, the US card in, in the United States to the, Mexi to the Mexican card or from the Mexican card to the, to the US card, just in 30 seconds, zero fees. So that is very important. Zero fees. Zero fees, no. So just think in this use case, you are working there in the United States and you receive because of the payroll, a paper check. Now you, you uh, the Hispanics need to go and to monetize this check and change it by cash. And after that, go and buy a remittance and no, there's, it's a mess. With us, we're inviting the people to receive the, the dot payroll, no, and in, on the US account, no, with electronic money, uh, with the financial inclusion, actually, no. And after that, they can send money right away, just in 30 seconds without fees to the, to the Mexican account. And we have a bunch of services, not only in Mexico for the, for, for the, for the Mexican pesos card, but also in the United States for the US card. So uh, if they, Hispanics uh, who are sending money every day because uh, uh, whatever reason, no, uh, they need to live there. They need to pay for a coffee. They need to pay for uh, or whatever reason. So we want to be with them when they are spending money in the United States, not only when they are sending money back into Mexico as a remittance uh, 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 in a remittance situation. So I believe that we want to be, uh, we want to, to take advantage in terms of technology. We want to use technology to, uh, to take up borders and to have a very uh, uh, a massive community uh, in terms of, of, the, uh, of all the Hispanics who are living there, but combined with the Mexican families that uh, are missing them uh, because they left like years or months ago or whatever reason. So uh, we want to use our technology and our platforms to, 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 to offer them uh, full financial services, uh, even though in the United States or in Mexico. So if I'm hearing you correctly, Gustavo, you know, this is in the U S this is really like being my, it's my ability in the U S to take money from my bank and transfer it into an account in another bank with a click of a mouse, right? Just to get on my computer. You basically, you've created a pathway for me to be able to do that between countries. Correct. You can do it actually in US, US as well with us. You can use using Bruxelles, you can send money in US, US or US into Mexico or Mexico, Mexico or Mexico, US. We're Let's, taking out borders because you know, out, yeah. Yes, you can use WhatsApp to have a communication without borders. You can, you can, uh, I don't know, you can watch for a private TV without borders, whatever, no, whatever company. So, why not? No, why? Why? Why does we, uh, it, it's important? It, we need to take out these borders, no, because of the financial uh, solutions and, and, and financial inclusion. I believe, and we can do that following the rules in each country. There's several rules in terms of compliance, in terms of KYC, in terms of uh, anti-money laundry. But if you follow that rules, and uh, we have a, a very complex, a very uh, successful algorithm that we did it here at Proxel with Mexican engineers that uh, uh, that achieve all those standards that, that we need to achieve and uh, uh, fulfill all the uh, rules that need to fulfill in terms of uh, all these uh, uh, all these uh, preventions uh, 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 for each remittance. So if we can do that, uh, that the question is. Uh, we want to do it, and the answer is yes. We we have a lot of people that really can use Bruxelles in the United States, and we we can we want to have a successful story uh, uh, using Mexico 
as an innovation hub in terms of uh, all the uh, payments and platforms. And, and we are doing that. We are working in that. And maybe I believe it's a, it's a great announcement for us as a team. Headroom is produced by Old Soul, a one-stop marketing agency that understands the power of brand and nuance. Reach out to my guy, Matt, at Old Soul and supercharge your brand and content strategy. That's Old Soul. Shoot Matt a note at aoldsoul.com. That's a o l d s o u l dot com. And now back to our guest. Talk with me or share with the audience what's the impact without Broxel, and if I am sending money from the U.S. to family in Mexico, help me understand what previous to Broxel, what would I be paying in a remittance? How much money would I be losing? You know, if I'm sending a hundred dollars U.S. How much is getting sort of pulled away uh, from the end recipient being maybe a family member? Yes, it's 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 a very important question. Just a use case. You no, know, for example, if you travel, if you are working every day for at any or whatever, uh, if you are working by any industry, and maybe you are receiving your payroll in a paper check. You no, know? so you need to go and exchange that paper check. Uh, for cash. No, this is the first fee. No exchange that paper check for cash. And after that, you need to go to a remittance company. No, uh, most, of, most of them uh, are based in the United States. And those companies are charging a lot of money for them. No, and maybe uh, with a, a very important fees and very important exchange rates. And in addition, no, when you send money, you have to wait maybe 24 uh, 48 or 72 hours till uh, your uh, uh, family in Mexico could have that money with them. So I believe that we are in a totally different mood. Now we have uh, thousands of merchants connected with Brussels in the United States. So if you have a Brussels account, you have your US account, you can go to any of these merchants, okay, put money in, and you will have it online on the card. Or maybe you have a paper check, you can go to any cashier at Walmart in the United States and exchange your uh, paper check and you will have your money on your card. Or maybe you can send an ACH from any bank to this Broxel account and you will have it maybe in some minutes, no? And after that, you have your money at your, at, at your Broxel card. Or maybe you can receive your payroll, no, at, at this Broxel account in the United States. But at that precisely moment, you can send it into Mexican into the Mexican account just in 30 seconds. Could be your, your account or could, could be your family account or could be a third party account. No, if we have the KYC done, no, happens in 30 seconds. And it's amazing. Just uh, to give you uh, some figures about 2021, almost 50% of the remittances, the people, uh, the reason of, of that remittance that, that, that happens in 2021 was because of a, a, a health reason. No, could be an emergency or it could be just for buying medicine or to support your family because any health reason. No, so they need to pay fees, they need to wait. And what happens if it's an emergency? And you, you need to wait 72 hours, but you need your money. You don't now. have that time. No? You don't have that time. No, and with Broxel now, you have to wait just. 30 seconds, you receive it at a, 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 a Mexican account in a card, and you can go directly to the pharmacy or to a supermarket and just use your, 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 card, your card without fees and to buy groceries or to buy medicines or whatever is needed. So I believe this is at 100%. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important announcement, and we want to, to have this a social impact in that community, not only in the United States, but also in Mexico. No, in Mexico, no, this, uh, this announcement could change a lot of things that the families uh, uh, do every day. No, and I believe that uh, Broxel will be helping uh, uh, many, many, many families uh, in both countries. And we are very happy about that. So, Gustavo, tell me if I'm wrong, but here's, what, here's my sense of it. You're, you're creating, it's more than financial freedom. And so, so I'll say, so you don't have to, but I think in the US, we have a challenge in supporting 
a person's sense of agency and independence, especially immigrants that come to this country. And so there's a challenge in feeling like you have to live in the shadows, especially financially if you're an immigrant. And so with Broxel, you, you, provide, you provide a Mexican-American the ability to participate in the national economy, both here and maybe in their home of Mexico. That feels like it provides a sense of self in a way that you, it's hard to put the, the overall value on. It's, it's just an incredible opportunity to feel a part of a community and not someone who's sort of living in the shadows. Does that, am I too far afield on that? It just feels like a fantastic opportunity to feel a part of the economic community and not have to live in the shadows as we sometimes treat immigrants here in this country. Yeah, you are totally right. We are very, very happy to participate and to help people in terms of financial inclusion, not only in Mexico as a country, but also in the United States. Broxel is not a remittances company. No, the remittances for us is one of the a bunch of services that we can offer to our uh, cardholders. No, they use us for many different reasons. One extra reason will be the, or now it's not, it, now it's the remittances, but it's one of many reasons. And all this combined, it's provoking financial inclusion. So you are totally right. So we are inviting them in the United States saying, hey, you can be part of this economy because you need to, 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 to support this economy in the United States because you are living there. You no, know? you are working there. Uh, your 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 uh, or all the all the uh, financial uh, solutions that uh, that you need for your daily basis, you can have it there, you no, know, in the right way instead of using cash everywhere. So, but in addition, you can control your money the hundred percent of the time, you no, know, twenty four seven. If you needed to have it in thirty seconds in Mexico, you can do it. Just use your cell phone, and that's it. No, and I believe that you are totally right because I believe that the people will understand that it's better to be part of the uh, of the economy in, in, in the in the in the good way instead of instead of be uh, just the, the cash version of the economy in, in the United States and Mexico as well. Tell me if you wouldn't mind, Gustavo. Tell me about your story. Uh, you're obviously an intelligent, bright human being who's incredibly accomplished. Why the fintech sector for you? Was there something personal about independence when it came to banking and the relationship that you had with money growing up? Oh, you know, I, uh, since I was a kid, uh, I, I was an entrepreneur. I started my first business when I have, when I, uh, when I have uh, 12 years old. I started with a giant bubble bomb machines that I bought in Texas, actually. And I took them down here into Mexico. Uh, we finished that business with a lot of bubble bomb machines. And after that, uh, uh, I was working for the Central Bank of Mexico in 1998, when I was very young. Uh, I'm a mathematician, no? And after that, I did a, a postgraduate in, in finance. And after that, in FINB recently. And uh, I had a, a, a restaurant chain as a business. And I started with one and I finished with uh, almost one, 100 uh, locations, corporate owned. And exactly in 2011, uh, uh, I received a, a, a proposal and, uh, to, uh, and I, I, I sold the company, 100% of the, of, of the company in, in March of 2011. Exactly that, in that year, September 2011, we start Broxel. Based on what? In three passions that I really love. No, I, I really love finance. No, I really, I really love to be uh, 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 an entrepreneur. No, and I really love the innovation. So everything combined, it's something that passionate me. And it's really that I, I love to work. I love to do whatever I do every day. And I want to, I, 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 I can share this passion with my team. And uh, I we try to to combine this you know, this passion with all, obviously with all the experience team that now we have uh, in Brock. So we start just uh, two of us, and now are almost one thousand people working twenty four seven in this uh, payments ecosystem. You now hiring more than five hundred extra people this year, and we want to we want to 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 share this success story based in Mexico. 
As Mexicans, we receive a, we receive a lot uh, of technology from the United States. A lot of companies are, arrived here in the United States. And my question is, why not Mexico can export you no know, something into the United States and for other geographies as well? So um, we want to we want to work in that project. Uh, I, I believe that we have an amazing story for the last 10 years. And now we are uh, uh, taking a very smart decision for the years to come. And I love the uh, I love technology because you can think uh, in many different ways. And there's there's no limits. No, there are just passion to building technology and to fulfill all the expectation of the end users because the user is the center of the game. And if we can fulfill those uh, 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 those needs, you no, know, and all the all the functionality functionalities that the uh, end user needs at this moment with this technology revolution, uh, I believe that Broxel could be very a very smart player in this game. So that's why I'm here you now, and, and more than happy to share this uh, uh, with you, with you, Roth. Gustavo, last question would be, uh, tell us about the inclusion of Mario Lopez into the Broxel family. Uh, obviously a well-known name, uh, personality uh, for the last really 30 years here in the, in the United States of Mexican-American heritage. Talk about Mario's inclusion into Broxel. Yeah, I believe the first answer and the right answer is for us, it's a no-brainer to invite Mario Lopez, not to be as an ambassador for Broxel. No, the, the question is if Mario Lopez will accept or not, because obviously uh, he's a very busy people. But the first impression that we know uh, that we have is that not only Mario Lopez accept the project, it's that really fill the project. No, and for me as a CEO and a president and founder, it's very important that the people fill the project because for us, you no, know, we fill it every day. We, we invest a lot of time and uh, uh, passion and a lot of effort uh, in this uh, it, to build these platforms and to combine all the things that we did in the past uh, and with a lot of passion and energy. So we need an ambassador to really feel the project. And Mario, you're, I believe that rep represents that passion as well in this project. When when we uh, when when we uh, share with him this uh, Manda Money Gratis program uh, and the social impact that this program could have in the Hispanic community, but also in the uh, in the Mexican families that are missing their uh, those those, those uh, family members who, who who left them and who uh, migrates into the United States, and we connect in two seconds. Say, hey guys, I like the project. I want to participate uh, with this company, and I want to share this with all the community. That 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 I uh, that I'm helping every day with with because of many different reasons, no. And I believe it's it's very very important, no. Well, Gustavo, it's fantastic to spend some time with you and get get the backstory on Broxel. It sounds like it's an incredible opportunity to create financial independence and, more importantly, financial inclusion uh, for millions of people. We want to thank Gustavo Gutierrez. He's a president and CEO of Broxel. Thanks for taking the plunge into Headroom, where we uncover the why behind the what and who impacting our lives. Headroom is a production of Rainlight and co-produced by our friends at Old Soul. I'm your host, Dr. Rod Berger, and this is Headroom.